preaches. And most people have been preaching error for a long time. Just like the person that says that it's not possible for you to lose your salvation. Meanwhile, if I read John 3, 16 for you from, from the Greek, it reads, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever continues to believe in, in him, his present continues. Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. His present continues. The believing must, you must continue. That means two days to my death. It means there's still a possibility that I can deny Jesus. So we renew our commitment to walk with him, to follow him every day. What is error? When we tell you of a benefit and we do not add the condition. So you are lost in after the benefit but you are not ready to fulfill the condition. We've been teaching people benefits for a very long time. How that next week there's going to be a phone call. And that phone call will come with a contract. And the contract, that is not how God, that is not how God operates. The, the condition is seek ye first. The kingdom of God. And it's right. If it is true that I'm under the government of God, giving will no longer be something that we need somebody to cajole me to give. Because all I am and all I have belongs to God. So part of my stewardship is what I do with what God makes available to me and how it impacts his kingdom. So if you are not yet sold out to the kingdom, you don't even have a vision for giving. The first thing is not about you giving to the kingdom. The first thing is about you surrendering to the kingdom. Because the Bible says, and they give themselves and also their substance. But we want to force people to give substance when they have not given themselves. We teach benefits. We don't teach conditions. And that is what we've been doing for many years. So people come to church because they are coming to meet a money doubler. A time came when the, the teaching became... Um, have you heard of the 24-hour miracle? <laughs> 24-hour miracle. I was coming out of the airport in Abuja. And I saw somebody. His face looks familiar, but I don't even know his name. And my elder brother held him by the hand. Normally, normally, if it were before, I will not enter my elder brother's car again. Why? Because he didn't tell me he was bringing somebody to come and meet me. If it, ah, I will just, if, meanwhile, if I walk from here down there, I will see somebody that I know in the airport. And I can leave my elder brother and take, you, you won't take, what? If it's seven years ago. He himself, I'm not sure he will, he will have the, hey, see, Jesus has walked. Jesus, he has walked. Ah, Jesus Christ. I was holding one. So I, I kept quiet. So when the car going, the guy now started talking. He said he was praying some years ago, some days ago, and he heard Jesus mention my name, that he should come to me, I will help him. So as he was talking, I was asking Jesus, do you, do you know this man? <laughs> Meanwhile, I was still angry. The anger was, we, I, I kept it somewhere. One side first. <laughs> are, you, are you aware of? Do you know this man? And he said, yes, I know him. I said, hey, what is his problem? He said, there is a delay that you can help him to solve. So I now asked him, are you married? He said, yes. I said, the delay we normally have this time. <coughs> See, marriage. <you. 
he's already married. What God delay again? Then the great one didn't talk. He, you know, I know him. When I'm asking too many questions and he doesn't answer, it means listen, listen. So now I allow the young man to talk. So he finished talking. He went to the Philippines. He's studied uh, marine engineering those engineers that work on board that fix the generators all those marine engine you know what i'm talking about he got a first class came back home he wanted to stay there he had a church he was already pastoring under a filipino pastor and then the lord now said it's time to go home he died just he thought he was he got a job there, and because the Lord said it's time to go home, they, they terminated his contract. So he came home stranded. It was in prayer. My name came to him. That's how he discovered that he knew my elder brother, connected with him. That's how my elder brother brought him that I was talking about. So he now said, okay. There is this outfit of NMPC, Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas. All right? The, one of the executives there said if he does a certain training, which will cost 700000 then with his background as a marine engineer, he will be taken. But the challenge is who will give him 700000 because Jesus, right in the card there, because Jesus confirmed that he was the one that sent him, I gave him the next day. Not because I had. Because when I gave him, there was a loophole in my account. But you know why I gave him? Not because I, I don't even know his name. But I remember I, I saw his face before. They say, that's not important. The thing is, Jesus said, I should break the yoke of the delay. And this time, not by prayer, it's by 700,000. <laughs> you understand that? So the next day I transferred the money to him. Till this moment I don't have his number. So it is my brother he called to thank my brother. All right? I've moved on. You know what? Jesus is my master. Without him, what is 700,000? He is my source. So if I know that guy came from him, go and solve your problem. And stop disturbing the airwaves so that we can bring real prayer to, to God. <laughs> it's only people that are submitted to Jesus that can give when he instructs. So if we cajole people to give that are not sub submitted to God, we robbed them. Many people gave me ideas on how we can raise money for ministry. In fact, I even started implementing one. And the Lord now said, who sent you to do this? I was in local church. He said, who sent you to do this? What was it that I did? Uh, okay. Our messages online, there are about a thousand or there were like a thousand then. We now said, okay. Let people give us five dollars. How much is five dollars? Calculate, calculate. Five dollars. Okay. Like 2K. So that they can access those 1,000 messages. $5. 2K. Is that? Because we had like um, the, our, our website community was like 1,000, 1.5 million people. All right? So when I say, okay, 2, 2K. And that, that's not supposed to be a body. With all sincerity of heart, people that are blessed by the ministry should contribute so that we can do other things. That was the motive. The great one now came to me and said, Who told you to put money? And I, I felt it was a just thing. He didn't accept that. I knelt down. I said, I didn't know. But you were there when we were doing the plan. You didn't say. <laughs> you didn't say anything. 
and then he kept quiet. I, and I, you know, in my own dealings with God, if I am talking and then he keeps quiet, it means God has finished. So I came back, went online, and apologized, and asked the people that if they want their refund, they should tell us. So those ones sent their account numbers. I personally refunded them. And then others say, no, ah, we've been blessed by the ministry. Let the ministry keep the money. Right? That was how we finished. Do you know the kind of insult people insulted me on Facebook? You will not, you will not understand. We kept quiet. Many years later, as I speak to you now, we don't need people to pay 2000 again. God wanted to take glory in our funding. He didn't want it to be a product of strategy because we have studied statistics. All right? Because we study statistics, we know what a community of 1.5 million people can produce. He said, That's Kana. I want to take glory. So I repented. If you are not submitted to Jesus, you will do something that is very wise. And that your wise move will be the reason why Jesus will leave you. An error this is the advertisement of benefits without conditions. So today in the body of Christ, we are preaching a prosperity that is without purpose. Because the goal of our prosperity is that you have more cars, more houses. Meanwhile, God doesn't have any challenge with you having cars anyway. But that's not the goal of your prosperity. A man that is submitted to the kingdom of God, that's, it is such a person that God can fall upon. Like in the book of Acts chapter 5, where people were given their lands. It's only people that are submitted to Jesus that he can compel by instruction, by a standing order. Make sure every month you give one million here. It is through the lives of such pillars that God funds the gospel. Do you know in a building, there are many blocks but few pillars. But it's the pillars that hold the building, not the blocks. Because we can build this thing with just pillars. And no blocks and it will be standing. Even, you know now engineers, you know what I'm talking about. You can use the columns alone and it will be standing without blocks. So the blocks, is not standing on blocks, it's standing on columns. So we don't need so many people to raise one billion. We just need pillars, just a few pillars. Leave the blocks alone. If the blocks have not yet known Jesus, if you take from them, you stole. Leave the blocks. He will raise pillars. And I decided that we will never steal to fund, fund ministry. One of my gifts is oratory. If I talk about money, you will give. But Jesus constrained me. Do you understand? Not to use that. Because he wants to take glory in how he funds us. The thing is, whether or not you are submitted to Jesus. Because your brain will still be active. But Jesus wants to be Lord. So you will need to suspend your high intelligence to accept his own method of doing his will in such a way that gives him glory and that's where the flesh comes under attack because whenever you cannot figure out how to make the next move the flesh is agitated and when god takes you through one impossible situation takes you through the next impossible situation they will not trust his fidelity and his capacity to see you through destiny it's men that have that knowledge that can risk themselves to be such people as we found the gospel by instruction, by standing order.